This is a voice cover video. If you feel uncomfortable, then you can mute it. It's a boy and girl fan fiction. If you're homophobic, kindly leave. Remember, it's just a fan fiction. Don't take it serious. And if I do any mistake in voice cover, then please forgive me. How can you do it, mom? I said, and it's final. You have to marry. But I don't want to, mom. I've already fixed it. They are rich and can help you in your business. But I'm already successful, mom. I don't need this kind of offers and. You already know I cannot marry her because I need to say that what can I am. She glared at him, who was already frustrated because of her decision. They are coming tomorrow, so behave yourself. She said and left the room while slamming the door. Thang sighed and sat on the bed, grabbing his hat in his hands. He is King Thang, the only son of kings. He is successful businessman and has everything. And now his mother wants him to get married to the daughter of Jones. We are also on the talk of Korean business industry. He knows that he cannot go against his mother's will, but he really don't want to get married to any girl. He doesn't want to ruin anyone's life. He always respected his mother's every decision, but now it's really difficult for him to do so. But can he change what exactly is written in his destiny? No. Even if he wants to, but he cannot. And that's how he accepted the fate, and he had to accept the marriage. Time skip after some days. Come on, Appa. You'll have to come with me. Anji, I need to go in office with Appa. You don't need to go, Appa. Go with her. I'll handle the work without you. Yes, son. Go with Anji. You should help her in shopping. But Amma, meet your brother-in-law there. You should also know him. Meet him and be friends. After all, we will be a family, Junko. Yes, Appa. And. Don't you want to buy anything for you to wear in my wedding? Okay, okay. I will go with you. Now happy? Yay! Come now. Time must be reaching there. I want to buy a lot of clothes and a pretty ring. Pretty ring for a pretty husband. He is not pretty. He is handsome. Handsome more than the handsomest. I know, I know. Now stop daydreaming and come. Now Jungkook is the elder son of Jung and came a few days ago after completing his studies. His father asked him to handle the position, but he denied, saying he isn't ready yet and wants to get experience first. So now, Mr. Jun is handling that position till his son gets capable to handle all the things by his own. Though he knows that he already is, and Jun's have a daughter too, Jun Andre, who is two years younger than Jungkook, and now is going to get married to Taeyong. He would like to visit the mall in their car to do shopping for Anji's marriage. Thayong also reached there and was waiting for them outside the mall. Thayong's point of view. I reached at the mall and stood outside of my car. I'm here waiting for Anji, my fiancée. I must say, she is really a nice girl. She respects and loves everyone. But can I love her? She doesn't deserve it. I know, but... I'm feeling so empty from deep inside, so emotionless because of these things happening in my life. I again sighed and turned around when I saw a car stop beside mine. I saw Anji came out of the car with a as usual smile on her face. I too smiled a little when my eyes fell on another figure came out of the car. I don't know why my eyes stopped on him and I totally forgot to blink. I felt my heart was thumping louder. After every step, he was stepping towards me. Papa, are you all right? He asked me when I came on the earth. Uh, y- yes, yes. Well, he is my elder brother, John Jungkook. Oh, so he is Jungkook, Anji's brother. Hi, Thayong. He raised his hand towards me, and I accepted that this is the first time I'm meeting him because he wasn't here on our engagement. Hi, Jungkook. Shall we go? Uh, yes, let's go. Anji grabbed me with her inside the mall. When Jungkook too walked beside us a little far, I don't know why I felt that feeling, but I should ignore it. Entering inside the mall, they first went to choose clothes for themselves. Anji asked the workers to show her some wedding dresses. Taeyong also started selecting dresses. Taeyong chose clothes and went inside the changing room to try it. Meanwhile. Jungkook was there outside selecting some jackets and t-shirts for his son. He took them and was about to enter when he heard someone calling his name. He frowned while looking around but found no one. 
He thought he just hallucinated, but again he heard the same voice, more like whispering. He looked again when found Thayum, who was in a changing room nearby. He frowned and walked towards the room when Thayum was peeking outside of it. Thayum point of view. I selected some shirts and t-shirts to wear and entered inside the changing room. I tried three four t-shirts and shirts which were fitting well. Then I took the full sleeves t-shirt which was seeming more flattered. It was seeming a bit tight but I put that on somehow. I checked myself in the mirror. It was really so tight. I tried to take that off but it stuck. But it isn't getting off. I tried to pull that again but it, it's really frustrating now. I'm feeling suffocated now. I need someone to help me take it out. I unlocked the door and peeked outside but found only Jungkook there. Should I call him? Of course I should. It's better to call him instead of others. I called his name when he was about to vent in a changing room. I again called him and he noticed me and walked towards me. What happened to you? Why her peeking like this? Can you come inside for a while? Huh? But before he could say further, I pulled him inside the room. He looked at me like his tiny ghost. But uh, he pressed his lips in a thin line trying to control his laugh. After judging my situation, I glared at him. Sorry, sorry. Um, help me to get rid of this. Why did you even wear it? Couldn't you see it's not your size? It's stuck. If you cannot help them, fine, fine. He stepped more closer and forcefully pulled that t-shirt out in one fell swoop, which made me unbalanced, and I landed on his chest. My heart thumped louder inside my chest when I felt his hands around my bare wrist. As I was half moon, I gripped hard and immediately distanced myself from him. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I got un unbalanced. Uh, it, it, it's fine. Thank you. He just nodded and left instantly. I released a big sigh because that was really insane. I still can feel him close to me. What's actually happening to me? I cannot let myself feel this way. He's my brother-in-law. I need to be careful. I cannot let it out, even if I want to. Time skip and the day came. The day of Thayong and Onji's marriage. You will Kim Thayong, take Jeonji as your lawful wedded wife and take her every responsibility till the very end and promise to be with her in her good and birth. Thayong looked at the beautiful girl who is standing in front of him smiling widely in her white gown. He looked at everyone and then at his mother who signaled him to respond. Thayong sighed internally. He knows that he cannot love her as a wife, but he will take her every responsibility. I do. Everyone clapped and the priest repeated the same statement to Onji, who also said I do. Then priests asked them to change their rings and they did. I announced you officially husband and wife. You can share the kiss now. Thayong looked at Anji, who shyly looked down. Thayong stepped towards her and kissed on her forehead when everyone gave a round of applause to them. Everyone congratulated them and now they all were sitting on the chairs around the table, talking and laughing. Thayong was all silent and drawn deep in his thoughts. His heart was feeling so heavy but he couldn't show it to anyone. He looked at Anji, who was smiling widely when everyone was talking and laughing. I am pointing to I don't know if it's right or not, but I'm feeling sorry for Anji. I married her, and I know that I can never love her. And the reason is why this has to be happening. I'm feeling like run away from everything to a place where I can just live and breathe peacefully. Is it so suffocating here? Suddenly, a voice from behind interrupted my thoughts, and I looked back only to find Jungle. My heart skipped its beat when I found him smiling. I felt my cheeks and ears heated up when he gazed at me. No, I should not feel this way for him. He's my brother-in-law. They even looked away when Jungkook approached them with a smile. And he stood off the chair and hugged Jungkook immediately, who hugged her back while giving his funny smile. Where were you, Oppa? She said, still hugging him, who chuckled a little and said, I was there when you were taking your walk with your loving husband. Really? Then why didn't show up? She asked, parting away from the hug and looked at him with her big doe eyes. 
Here, it's a gift I bought for you. He handed her over a gift while patting her head softly. And here, Karim was just looking at them both recklessly. Mrs. John noticed this and said, Don't be jealous, Tyra. He is brother of your wife. He said, making them all laugh. Then Karim looked away from them and said, He doesn't know what he is feeling all of a sudden, but it's something new and real for him. And the main thing is, he isn't feeling this way because of his wife, but the man standing there in front of her. He doesn't want to have these feelings towards Jungle, but he isn't able to control his heart. I guess it's Jungle's turn to get married. After all, he is older than Anji. Here, in this story, Jungle and Tayong are the same age. Mrs. and Mrs. Kim are older than Mrs. and Mrs. Jung. You are right on me, but for that, we need to find the perfect partner for Jungle. Ah, uh, that's not a big deal. My cousin's daughter is perfect match for Jungle. Mrs. Jung was about to say further when Jungle himself interrupted in between. But I don't want to get married to any girl, Mrs. Kim. Wait, you are a young man and I'm not into girls. As he said, Mrs. Kim, Mrs. Kim, and Tharam looked at Jungle. Of course, Jungkook's family know about it, and they don't have any problem with it. Uh, are you gay? Several relations don't discriminate in gender. Love is love after all. We don't need to bound it in any restrictions. He stated confidently with a smile on his face. Han was surprised how Jungkook was so confident and is not worried about his sexuality at all. How confidently he said that he is into boys, not into girls. Jungkook excused himself and walked from there. Then again, Mrs. Kim said, looking at Mrs. Jung. Uh, are you okay? I'm totally fine, honey. What would happen to me? She said, smiling. I mean, uh, aren't you bothered because Jungkook is... Why should be bothered by it? I mean, what about your generation? You know, son, it's the model for your honey. Science has developed a lot. It's not a big deal to grow a generation. We should not be bothered about it. It's not like we were not worried about our son, but... Then he told about it, but it's not a big deal. We know our son has potential to do the things which others are not. We are lucky because he is a good human being, and I guess we should not underestimate someone because of these things. You are right. The generation now has become more open about these things, yet some people are still homophobic. He said the last line, looking at Mrs. Kim, who excused herself from them and walked out of the hall. After a few seconds, I am too excused from everyone and left towards Washo. I am really sorry on behalf of her. He said, smiling awkwardly. It's fine, Oppa. It's her point of view. We cannot do anything about it. On the other side, Thayam looked at himself in the mirror after washing his hands. He leaned over the wash basin while keeping his both hands on the both sides of it. He sighed deeply with closed eyes. But flinched all of a sudden when heard a voice from behind. Are you all well? Jungkook? The lorry, while looking at his reflection in the mirror, stepped towards him and put his hand on his shoulder while looking concerned at him. Are you feeling sick? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm all right. He said and was about to go but stopped and again said, You should have said that in front of my mother. It's not my fault that she is homophobic. Still, you are not afraid of accepting myself, Mr. Kim. He turned towards Thayam and walked towards him when Thayam too turned around. Take care of my younger sister. That's it. I want Thayam. My sister and I both are on a different lines. My sexual orientation has nothing to do with her. I hope you will keep your promise you did to her today, right? He said straight looking at Thayam. I will. She is my responsibility now. He said and walked out of the washroom. Time skip. Thayam and Anji entered inside the house. It's Thayam's house in which he lives alone and now Anji will also live with there as his wife. They both dropped their bodies on the couch and hugged. It was so exhausting. Hmm. You can change your outfit till then I'll make something edible. In which room? Over there. He pointed towards her room. She got up from there and left towards the room. Thayam pointed at Anju got up and walked in the kitchen. Some time Anji came there and sat on the dining table waiting for Thayam to come. Thayam too came there and set the table. 
The birds were not that much hungry, but still it was important to eat something. The Tangiers prepared some oats and milk for them. They both dig on their food silently. Anji could feel Thang was a bit uncomfortable, so he spoke. You know what? My brother is also like you. Jengu Koppa, I saw you feel you both, but you both are like one soul in two bodies. What do you mean? Both look and behave in the same way. When you're comfortable with someone, you behave shyly. But when not, you behave like cops. Thang smiled a little, loving on his own. He knew she is friendly and talkative, but he never got a chance to talk to her properly. Again, see, he never talked to her much. Somewhere he wanted to talk to her, but somewhere didn't. I know it's an arranged marriage, but we can give it a try, right? Thang couldn't answer her when she softly smiled. At least we can be friends, right? Hmm. He hummed, giving her a soft smile because of her words. She understood without saying anything. They both decided that they will stay in different rooms. No one forced another one to do anything forcefully. These four days, four weeks, and four months passed. Thang and Onji both were feeling now comfortable with each other because of their mutual understanding. Thang was somewhat relieved because of Onji's behavior towards him. He knew he wasn't doing the right thing, but he couldn't say anything. He was waiting for the right time. They both used to spend a quality time with each other, not like couples, but friends. And on the other side, Thang was working with Mrs. Jones. He was up for business day. He used to spend most of the time around Jungle because he handles all the work, even Mrs. John is the same. Jungkook somewhere feels that Thang always ignores him, and that's kinda true. Because Thang doesn't talk to him except any work. In Thang's perspective, there is nothing like brother-in-laws in between them. That's just because of Thang's behavior towards him. Jungkook accepted that it's because of his sexuality that makes Thang uncomfortable. Somewhere he feels hurt, but he ignores it every time. Here the both came to meet some of their clients outside in the restaurant. The deal got finalized, and the clients already left. And now, the both are left alone as Jungkook pass time to have the dinner together because they will get late reaching home. They both had their dinner and I was waiting for the waiter to come and have the dinner. There was an awkward silence in between them. Time was just checking his phone and Jungkook was looking outside of the window. It was already dark and the moon was shining brightly in the sky spreading. The sparkles in darkness, like dim light, shine in the blue ocean. He sighed and automatically his gaze shifted towards Thayan. For a moment, Hung's eyes stopped on him. It was like he just caught his moon shining brightly among the stars. It wasn't the first time he felt this sensation in him. But it was the first time he stopped there forgetting that he is his sister's husband and already someone's own him. He is already someone else him. His blinkless gaze wanted to adore that man sitting there. Snapped back when heard some voices. Thank you, sir. The waiter said, bowing towards Simon and left. Why did you pay? Uh, not a big day. We should leave now. Jungkook nodded and they both got up. They were about to leave when heard an announcement. They both stopped at that moment and looked at the person holding a mic. Hello, everyone. I'm the manager of this restaurant. Well, Today is the 4th anniversary of this restaurant and like the previous years, we have a surprise for you all this year too. Everyone clapped and the manager was going to Two lucky tables will get a chance to get the special pass of a restaurant and one lucky table will get a special dinner offer and have a chance to perform a dance. Enchanted with full enthusiasm and everyone again clapped. He announced the two tables which got the special pass and now the one lucky table was left. And then he announced the table number, which was none other than Kaifuk. For some seconds, they couldn't get anything, but the manager worked towards them and bowed with a smile. Congratulations, sir. You both won the special dinner in this restaurant. Everyone again clapped that Kaifuk was not somewhere in their thoughts. Jungkook looked at Thayong and spoke. Um, thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate it, but we cannot perform the dance. You both should perform, sir. You both are great match. Come on, sir. Everyone started cheering for them. Jungkook looked at Thayong, who was standing there blinklessly. 
He again was about to say, but Thayal interrupted him. Fine, we will perform. He looked immediately gazed at him surprisingly. He excused the manager and took Thayal aside. But Thayal was saying, Thayal, we cannot dance. Let's just do it. We are bred brother-in-laws, I know. That's why I'm saying we can perform. Moreover, it's just a performance. Now come. He walked towards the manager and Junko followed him behind. The manager led them towards the place decorated for dance performance. They played the music and Tadik stood in front of each other. In the dim light of the hall, they both stepped closer to each other, maintaining the eye contact, which was telling the unspoken words they were hiding in their hearts. Holding one hand of Tadik in his one and putting another one on his waist, Junko pulled him more closer. And here, Thayong's one hand rested on Jungkook's shoulder. They both started moving together with the every beat of the music. Likewise, their hearts were playing the soft rhythm they could feel. They both got lost in the soft music, forgetting the relation they are holding. The only thing they could remember was just the connection they were having. They both parted away and bored a little after the performance and everyone clapped. For everyone, it was just a performance, and that too, they were accepting, but it was just to avoid the feeling they were having deep inside. They both sat on their seats again because the manager asked them to wait for a while, as the owner of the restaurant will himself give the reward. The manager came there with the owner behind him. Patrick stood up when they came. Hayoum looked surprisedly at the owner when they both looked at each other. He almost screamed his name, making Jungkook and the manager look at them both confusedly. Jimin, is it you? I'm really surprised to see you inside. He said and asked the manager to leave. Oh no, I'm really happy to see you. He said and hugged Jimin, who also hugged him back, almost forgetting. Jungkook was also there. I didn't know you owned this restaurant. I also didn't know. Huh? My husband, Minyungi, owned this restaurant and he told me just some days ago. Min Yoongi. Oh no, Yoongi and Yoongi both got married? Yep. Where is he? He was busy, that's why he asked me to come here. Oh, is he your boyfriend? He said, finally looking at Jungkook. Thayong finally remembered that Jungkook is also there. Ani, Ani, oh. So, is he your book? My brother-in-law, my wife's brother, John Jungkook. And Jungkook, he is Park Jimin, my high school best friend. He introduced them both when they both shook hands. Why? He asked like confirming that he didn't get it wrong. Hmm. Um, excuse me for some minutes. I need to make a phone call. Yes, of course. Time point of view. Jimmy left from there when Jimmy looked at me. Like questioning and asked me to sit. You married to a, a girl kind. Do I have another choice? Mrs. King paused you. Why cannot she understand your feelings? He said in a display. It's okay. I just accepted it. Accepted? But you accepted it, but can you love her? You cannot, Thayong. You can never. He said when I just could look down on the table. Jago put his hand on mine and said, You should tell her, Thayong. You cannot deceive her. Tell her before it gets too late. Do you understand me? He said concernedly looking at me. I just know that. He is right. I cannot deceive her for so long and I never wanted to. I wanted to tell her the truth that I cannot love her as a man because I'm... I'm... I'm into men. Isn't it funny? I'm into men but cannot show it. And why? Just because of my own mother. It was really tough to tell her. I thought she'll understand but she didn't. And she couldn't. On the other side, Jungkook's point of view, I came outside as an excuse to call. But the thing is, I was just feeling uneasy there. Why it's feeling weird to be with him like this? I thought he was homophobic, that's why he was behaving like that. But, but his friend is married to a man and he was happy for him. He even hugged him. Then what's with me? Why it's so complicated in between us. We should not be like this because we are brother in law. But nothing is like that. And why is friends with boyfriend? Is he the or no, no, he cannot be. But I could sense a nervousness in his eyes when we were dancing. 
really frustrating. Must be crazy. I'm feeling this way for my own brother-in-law. Time skip after some days. After that day, they both went busy and due to work, they couldn't meet. They totally forgot about the things which happened that evening. And maybe they wanted them. It was necessary and the gap was also needed because they were just wishing for some time to again face each other. It's not like they did something wrong, but it was just because of their feelings. I'm fine, guy. Nothing happened. I said, take your medicine, Andre. Why didn't you tell me you were feeling sick? It's not a big deal, though. Here, take it for now. We'll visit a doctor tomorrow, okay? Hmm. She took the medicine Tharim gave her. She slipped into the blanket when Tharim asked her to do. He sat beside her on the edge of the bed and placed his hand on her forehead. She smiled sweetly at him. Patted her head for a while, then found her sleeping. It made him smile a little, but he was feeling sad at the same time. His eyes went numb. He covered her properly with the blanket and went out of the sitting of the light. Time skip. It's almost 11 at night and Thayung is working here on some files, sitting on his bed. It's slashing outside. Then his attention diverted when he heard a bell ring. He frowned confusedly and got off the bed after having a glance on his watch. He walked towards the main door. The bell again rang, but this time Thayung opened the door. He was Jungkook standing there with wet clothes on. He looked at Thayong, who became a statue finding Jungkook there, that too in that condition. He could just mumble his name in his face. Can I come in? Oh, yes, yes. He left the space for Jungkook to get inside and then close the door. Are you okay? What happened to you? Actually, my car broke down in the middle way back to home. Your house was near, so I just... I called Andre, but she didn't pick up, so I had to. It's okay. Um, you should change your clothes first. Oh yes. Come. He asked Jungkook to go in a room, and himself went in his room to take some clothes for him. He came inside the room and got first after looking at Jungkook, who was standing there shirtless. His tattoos were making his fat muscular body more hot. Time got hard looking at him up to down. But immediately shifted his gaze on the other side while clearing his throat, making Jungkook to look at him. Um, thoughts for you. Maybe they'll fit on you. Oh, thank you. He said after coming to his side and took the clothes from his hands. He looked at the clothes and said with a soft smile. They're perfect. Thanks. Time hummed and was about to go but stopped and again said, Come and have some soap. He sat and left without giving any chance to speak. Jungkook sighed and after taking a quick shower, he went towards the signing area. He saw Thayim was pouring the soup in the bowl. He sat on the chair and Thayim came there. He kept the bowl on the table in front of Jungkook and two sat there in front of him. It was needed. Thanks for this. Hmm. And sorry for bothering you this late. It's okay. I was awake anyways. Oh. He started having the soup, then again asked, Where is Anji? She slept already, so I didn't bother her. Next morning, Jinko came out of the room and headed towards the kitchen to have some water. He saw Thai and Anji are already there. They are talking about something. He stepped towards them. But why? It's nothing so serious, Thai. I'm fine now. At least go and have a checkup. I've already checked. My temperature is normal now. You should go if he is insisting. He said in between joining them. Andre looked surprisingly at Jungo. Papa? When did you come? She hugged him and parted. I came last time. My car broke down and I came here. Oh, that's really amazing. We'll have breakfast together then. Go and rest. I'll prepare breakfast. Anyo, I'm Ash. You should listen to me. Go and rest. I'll help him. Really? Yes. Okay, it will be fun to see my brother and husband working in the kitchen together. She excitedly said and went into her room to take a bath. Here, Taiko wore the apron and started their work. From the point of view, we both started working in the kitchen. I just asked him what he is making and focused on my work. Because it's kind of weird when we both talk. 
I don't want to think about him. I shrugged my thoughts and automatically my gaze went on him. He was trying to get down something from the upper sun, struggling and stretching his body and hands to the box. Since I left my mouth, which was loud enough to hug his ears, he turned towards me and glared with a look like dare to laugh. I again shifted my gaze back to my work and he again started chasing the book. I again gazed at him and my eyes fell on the shelf. I widened my eyes when I saw a glass box was about to fall. I immediately ran towards him and pulled him towards me when the box fell on the ground and broke into pieces. I don't know why my heart beat increased and I felt a fear for him. I felt like what if he would get hurt? I must protect him. I felt his head against my chest and I don't know but I cupped his face in my hands and looked deeply in his eyes. Are you okay? I felt a nervousness in his eyes when we were too close. I realized it and backed away embarrassedly. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. He said almost stuttering. I put down the box he was trying to put down and kept that on the kitchen counter. He again thanked me and started working again after cleaning the mess on the floor. I too started working but I don't know what's going on. What kind of tension is working in between us? He is my brother-in-law, my sister's husband and here I am feeling this way around him. Am I making him uncomfortable? I felt he was, un he was nervous when I held him. But why? Oh my god, it's making me crazy. The three sat around the table and they won their food. Anja looked at Jungkook, who was busy having his breakfast. Then she gazed at Thayong, who was also concentrated. Papa? She uttered looking at Jungkook, meanwhile Thayong also shifted his eyes on her. Why don't you stay with us for some days? What? Anya, Anja. I cannot. I don't want to bother you. But I just want to spend some days with you. She said lolly, pouting cutely. Don't act like this. It's not gonna work. You should stay. He said munching his food without looking at them. I, I is also saying now, please Oppa, don't be stubborn. If you think you're bothering us, then it's nothing like that. It's on this house too. And you're her brother. If she wants you to stay with her, then you should. Jungkook looked shockingly at Thayong because he never talked in this tone with him before. And maybe it was the first time he said this much long sentence to him. He didn't say anything, just nodded, which made Anji smile widely. Time skipped. They had their breakfast and both went outside of the house. Time's driver came there driving the car and went inside and once gazed at Janko, who was calling someone. Janko again looked at the phone when no one answered. Is there anything wrong? Uh, oh, actually my driver isn't picking up the call. Uh, broke down last night. Hmm, my driver drove that off towards the house after getting that repair. Uh, if you don't mind, let's get into mine. Uh, uh, Ania, I'll go. You are already running late. We'll get more if wait for him. We are still sitting on the back seat. Jungkook zoomed out for some seconds and get into the car beside him on the back seat. Thank you. Um, my driver will drop you. After that, no one uttered a single word. The drive was silent, but the silence was loud. Loud enough to give the voice to their unrevealed affection. Maybe, words are not able to give an account of their intuition. Prefer to be quiet was the only option they chose. Maybe, not wanting to have these feelings for a person who is already so far is the best option you can have. Evening. Please, Oppa, I want to play. You're really stubborn, Anji. I need to check this file right now. Cookie, Oppa, please tell him to play with us. He's working, Anji. Let's not disturb him now. He said calmly, making her pout sadly. Come, I'll play with you. But you always win. Jungkook chuckled at her behavior. <laughs> okay, I'll try to lose. They both started playing video game. Meanwhile, Thayong was busy checking the file. After some time, Ah, why you always win? You can't even lose for once for your little sister. She will like a child making Janko giggle. <laughs> I told you I'll try to lose. You didn't promise. You're really bad, Oppa. But I know. I can beat you in this game. Are you kidding me? She is not wrong though. 
he said closing the file let's have a round then yay thank you that i know you will win over this double bunny you dumped your elder brother on me because you never let me win my toba will take the revenge right she looked at the tyrant who chuckled a little while loading Both sat there, and Anji sat behind them on the couch in the middle of the game. Oh, Pa, what are you doing? She pushed Jago a little because he wasn't giving any chance for Karan to win. He giggled and focused on the game. Don't worry, Anji, I'm gonna win anyways. You seem so confident, I. Yep, and I'm gonna win, okay? He said, giggling. Jago looked at him intently because it's the first time he called him by his nickname. That too, with that calm voice. Not like usually, he called him with a cold tone. And the first time, he was smiling genuinely. He almost got lost in his smile, but soon realized that the game is still going on. Time later. Yay! We won! We won! She jumped in happiness as Thine won the game. Jungkook made a face like he is irritated by her, but deep down, he felt good seeing his sister happy. His eyes went on Thailand, who was also smiling, looking at her. Time skipped after some days. These days, they three spend most of the time together. After office hours, both used to spend time with Anji. They both knew that there is something in between them, but it was not as easy to accept it, due to the relation they were bound in. This relation was pushing them apart, and maybe that was the best they could do. For the sake of Anji, they started accepting each other with that relationship, forgetting about their inner feelings, or can say, suppressing them. Right, by looking at the half moon that was shining in the darkness of the sky, just one star is shining there beside it. Like it's the only one who doesn't want to leave its company at any cost. Sitting by its side is the only best he can do. He again sighed and turned. And found Thayong there. He walked towards him and stood at a distance. It's peaceful here, isn't it? Hmm. He too turned and again gazed at the moon. Is something bothering you? Anya, I'm just happy to see how much you are taking care of Anji. I'm relieved because she is with a man who is understanding and cooperative. He didn't say anything. Or, but he could say at that moment. He was feeling a guilt that was eating him up. No matter how much he tried, but he was falling to express what's in his heart. It's not like he's taking the care for Anji. Yes, he does care about her. He does love her, understand her, supports her, but he does it as a friend, not as a husband or lover. He wanted to tell her what's his actual identity, but every time he tried, he couldn't. He knew he was breaking her trust, knowing he can never love her as a man. He isn't only breaking her trust, but also others. And this was eating him up from inside. After two days, Janko came after his work and saw when he was making dinner. He placed his bag on the table and sat on couch, resting his head there. Tired? She started coming there with a glass of water. Anyo, why did you bring the water? I was going to drink it by my own. She just smiled and sat there and asked, "Where is I? Thai? I don't know. Did I come yet?" Anya, I asked you because you two are working together, right? Yes, but he left earlier. I thought he would be at home. Must be doing some work. Jungkook nodded while humming. Go and fresh up. I serve you the food. You are looking pale. Is everything all right? Hmm. Did you visit the doctor? She didn't answer him like she would not some way. Jungkook patted her shoulder when she came on the earth. What happened? I asked you something. Oh, yes. It, it's nothing serious. Just having stomach infection. What? And you didn't tell us? It's not a serious opa. I'm having medicines. Now go and fresh up. Time skip. Jungkook and Anji are sitting on the couch. Then Jungkook is reading a file and Anji is watching TV. Slowly dozing off while watching it. Just then, Jungkook got a call. He picked it up with a frown on his face. He cut the call after talking and saw Anji already slept. 
He picked her up and had her in her room to lay her on the bed. After that, he came out of the house, looking it from outside. Soon he reached in the bar and saw Thayun's driver. He walked towards him. Thank God you came, sir. It's really hard to handle him. What happened to him? He drank too much. He usually doesn't, but did something happen? I don't know, sir. Okay, you can leave. I'll handle him. Jungkook said and walked towards Thayun, who was sitting on a chair, totally wasted. He tapped on his shoulder and said lowly, Hayoum, are you alright? Hayoum gazed up at him, hearing his voice, still sitting in the same position. Cookie, <laughs> am I saying things? All the time. Every time I feel so weird, and he smiles and calls me by my nickname. Should I feel this way for my brother-in-law? Come, let's go home. Can you walk? Yes, I... I... Then he stood up and walked some steps ahead but fell on the ground. Jungkook went towards him immediately. Are you okay? I've fallen on the ground. Like, like I'm falling in reality. He said, smiling sadly and looking at Jungkook with his drunk eyes. You're really drunk. Let me tell you one secret of mine. No tear, let's go. I don't know why, but I picked him up in my arms and headed out of the bar. I got good pumps when he wrapped his arms around my knees and nuzzled up in my neck. I almost caught a heart attack. He keeps on moving something, but it's not clear. I opened the door of the car and made him sit inside. Pulling the seat belt, I wrapped it around his chest. When I fell, he pulled me closer by my neck. I looked at him and girl. He's fucking so close. He opened his eyes a bit and suddenly bit my ear making me run go. He giggled and was about to bite again when I backed off immediately. He's really dangerous when he's drunk. But cute. I sat on the driver's seat and looked at him. Suddenly he shouted making me think, Yeah! What the hell happened to you? Why did you shout? I said, placing my hand on my chest as I was really scared. Do you know a secret? What? Um, I'm a loser. I'm a coward. Such a pathetic loser. <laughs> he laughed, but his eyes were thin. Sadness was clearly visible in his eyes. You know what? I should just die. I, I cannot even accept Myself, the way I am. Stop it. Shut your mouth and sit quietly. And who are you to say that? He hurriedly unbuckled the seat belt and looked at Jungle with angry eyes. There the seat belt came through. He couldn't complete his sentence. Then he felt time move in his lap like a monkey. He got forced there by Thayum's sudden action. You cannot give me any order. Understood? He grabbed his collar in anger. You know what? No, no one can understand. No one. He nuzzled in Jungkook's neck, who was still close. Can, can you understand me? Just a bit. Jungkook felt time stares on his neck. He didn't say anything, just wrapped his one arm around his face softly and patted it. I want to tell this secret. I want to be free from this. I want to tell everyone. I want to tell that that I am. Uh. When Jungle fell, Thayum blacked out in his arm. He again made him sit and wear his seat belt and drove him. Next day, Thayum opened his eyes and felt a sharp pain in his head. He grabbed it and closed his eyes. He could only remember that he was in a bar and after some drinks, he lost his consciousness. After some time, he went to get ready for his office. He came out of his room and sat on the dining table. He saw Jungkook and Onji were in the kitchen. They both came there with food. How are you feeling, Papa? Um, I'm fine. Your driver told me that you were under the influence last night. Hmm, uh, I guess I was. I drank a lot that I was it. Why did you drink then? Don't stress yourself because of work or anything else. Do you understand? 
I won't. I gazed at Junko, who was all silent. What happened to him? Is he upset or something? Why is he so silent today? Should I ask? Are you bothered by something, Junko? An Anya, I sat and focused on my meal. I don't know what to think or say. Last night, it was someone else. Someone I never even imagined. Or maybe because he was drunk. I don't know anything. I cannot even tell him. Maybe he will feel embarrassed. But I swear, if he wasn't my brother-in-law, I would have lost my control. Why is it happening with me? I want to run away from these feelings, these thoughts. But is it even possible that he is? No, 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 no. What the hell I'm thinking? Or is it possible that I? No, a big no. I should not think about it. I guess I should move from here to my apartment. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose my mind. Ah, uh, Anji. Yes, Appa. I guess I should leave now. Oh, you must be late for office. I, I mean, I should move to my apartment now. It's been so many days I'm staying here. I don't know why I felt a sadness when he talked about moving to his house. I don't know why I want to stop him, but I know I cannot. He is free to go or do anything. It's his life after all. I didn't say anything, and after having breakfast, we both left towards our offices. All day, I was lost in his thoughts. He couldn't do anything properly because simple thoughts were roaming around his head. He was thinking why it's bothering him. And why he's feeling the sadness taking over him, like he's losing something. Little did he know the reason, but he was keep on denying it. I sleep at evening. I entered inside my house and dropped myself in the car. I looked around inside. Why I want to see him? Is it because I'm used to see him around every day? Why is all over my mind? Maybe some more days pass. I realized that Jungkook's absence was bothering him, but he was denying it. They weren't meeting officially, as the project they were working on together was not completed. He was thinking, "Why is feeling this for Jungkook when he never felt anything for anyone else? Why only Jungkook?" He didn't want to accept his feelings for his brother-in-law. At the same time, he couldn't love Anjali, and how he was supposed to do that? When he is into two girls, he wanted to distract himself from Jungko, but he couldn't take any other guy because no matter if he loves Anju or not, he cannot cheat on her with someone else. He was all messy now. He came inside his house and looked around. He gazed in kitchen but couldn't find Anju. He thought she must be in her room, so he also left in his room to freshen. After some time, he came and sat on the couch. He is early today because there wasn't that much work in office, so he thought of spending some time with Anji because he feel relaxed with her. He also knows that there is nothing like husband and wife in between them, but they are happy as friends for now. Time always feels guilty, but happy too because she never crossed her limits with him. She respects him and understands. That's why time does the same. Walked towards her room when she didn't answer and knocked. Anji, Anji, are you there? No response. Anji, don't play around and open the door. His heartbeat increased when he didn't get any response. He knocked again and again in fear. When he didn't receive any response, he unlocked the door with a spare key. The bearings are Anji was lying on the floor lifeless. For a moment, he saw left his body, and he saw blood coming out of her mouth. He ran towards her and shook her body with his trembling hands and stuttering voice. Anji, Anji, wake up! What happened to you, Anji? He picked her up in his arms and ran out of the house in his car. Soon, he drove off towards the hospital. Thank you. Hiyo, he looked at the direction and found Jungkook, who stepped towards him. What happened to her? I I don't know. When I went into the room, I saw her lying on the floor and 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 blood blood was flowing from her nose. 
I was so crying. Doctor asked me to wait. I I don't know what happened to her. Tears were threatening in his eyes, but he was controlling himself. Jungkook sat beside him and patted his shoulder. She must be fine. Don't work for Hyun. They both looked beside and found Jin, who is their family doctor. Jin, you is she fine? What happened to her? I want to talk about her health. What happened to her? Can you come with me inside? Pan gave Jack Jungkook. Can I also come here? Uh, you can. They both followed him. Can you please tell me what happened to her? Seems like she didn't tell you anything. So, uh, about what? She. She has blood cancer, thanks.